everyone. So I already made a video about the time Steve Wozniak gave me a laptop um, and a few people expressed interest in hearing about the time I met Steve Wozniak so I'm going to tell you about that now. Um, if you haven't seen the other video I'll link it uh, up here or down there or something. Uh, you don't really need to have seen that to understand this but it might, it might help. Um, so uh, one of the things I mentioned was was.org where there's a whole lot of Q&A of just questions that people have asked was and his responses. Um, there is another thing at was.org which was the was cam. Uh, that was just a webcam showing Steve Wozniak's office and anybody could just look at his office at any point and you could zoom in and out and um, and move the change where the camera was pointing must have been a pretty fancy uh, webcam for the turn of the century and so I used to watch that occasionally I mean it seems a little creepy really looking at somebody in their office uh, but I don't know he put the camera there most of the time he wasn't actually there um, there, there was a, a little was plushy sitting on the chair instead and also because I was in New Zealand and uh, New Zealand is about 20 hours ahead of the Bay Area depending on whether it's daylight savings or not um, of course like whenever I was looking it was not usually his office hours a lot of the time it was the middle of the night and I mean I don't know why it would be the middle of the night when we were technically only four hours different on a different day but I'm a night bird, so um, I actually emailed the cam master because sometimes the lights would be off and I wouldn't be able to look around his office. Uh, so I remember two different responses to this. I, I know that I got an email directly from Steve Wozniak in response to my email to the cam master and this was actually the first communication I'd ever had with him. I think this was before he called me on my birthday, before he bought me an iBook. Um, the very first interaction, in, in fact even before I sent him that email where I asked a question which is on was.org, um, the very first communication I had with was was him emailing me uh, when I didn't even email him to start with uh, to uh, apologize for the lights being turned off. He said that he told the cleaning staff to leave them on but uh, sometimes they would forget so he would remind them. And the other response I got, and I don't know whether I sent two separate emails and got different responses um, or this was both for the same email, but I got a response from a guy named Alex Fielding who was the actual cam master and he's a friend of Steve Wozniak's and somehow we ended up uh, exchanging a whole lot of emails back and forth and we we were writing some pretty long emails to each other and basically became friends. So uh, after Woz bought me the iBook, a couple of years after that I finished my university degree using this laptop and uh, I got a job as a Windows developer because there was no such thing as jobs as a as a Mac developer in those days. They were not very popular. Uh, so, you know, just dirty money doing Windows dev. It, it was alright. It was a fun job. Um, I saved up some money and I was ready to go on the ultimate pilgrimage of any Apple fan, which is, of course, to go to the Worldwide Developers Conference in San Francisco. Because back then all you had to do was buy a ticket and you could go and of course buy flights or whatever accommodation. Uh, nowadays I think they have some kind of lottery system where you can't be sure you'll get in because it's so popular and there's not room for everybody who wants to go. Um, but back then you would just pay, it was like two and a half thousand dollars or something. Actually I'm not even sure because I got a combo deal where I also got a year of um, Apple Developer Connection membership so I'd get DVDs in the mail and a t-shirt and stuff and a hardware discount because I knew that about a year or so after after the, the developer conference 
which is when the hardware discount would expire. By that time, I would probably want a new laptop and I'd have to pay for it myself. So, um, so anyway, I, I uh, planned to go to WWDC and actually ended up uh, going to several other countries after that. And uh, in fact, planning that trip was how I eventually ended up working at CERN for eight and a half years, but that's another story. Um, I went to San Francisco. I was awake for 35 hours or something because I can't sleep on, on planes. And I arrived there something like eight hours before I left because time zones. Uh, and I slept for a whole lot. And then the next morning I called Alex to see whether he wanted to meet up. And he did. He was basically immediately suggesting let's go to the Apple store, meet Was there, and then go have dinner or something. Uh, so he picked me up in his car. I tried to get into the driver's seat because it was on the wrong side of the vehicle from what I was used to. Um, and Alex explained that uh, they decided not to meet at the Apple store because if Was went to an Apple store he'd probably get mobbed by fans and instead it was just going to be mobbed by me I guess. Uh, so we met him at a restaurant called Pizza My Heart, and I had my very first pepperoni pizza and root beer. Um, and, yeah, so, <laughs> Was had this device in his mouth that had a whole lot of flashing LEDs that he could turn on and off with his tongue. So he would just, you know, his teeth would be flashing all different colors. Um, so we, I think we were mostly talking about that and eating pizza and uh, and so on. Um, and then after after we had had dinner, we went to a concert. I, I have notes on my iPad, by the way, in case in case I'm looking down a lot. It's just to make sure that I remember everything. Um, so we went to a concert in Steve Wozniak's Hummer, which is a giant vehicle and it was it had like a, a DVD player, a TiVo apparently. I'm not sure why you would have a TiVo because if you're if you're recording something to watch later you can do that from home. But maybe it's to, to watch the, the shows. Or maybe he just made that up uh, as a prank. I don't know. Uh, there was a satellite dish on the top and he was trying to convince somebody that that was for tornado hunting or something. Um, and also, uh, there were four Segways in the back of the Hummer. He told me he could fit six Segways in there, but there were only four at the time, including one that was apparently a special model only for the U.S. Postal Service that could balance itself even when nobody was standing on it. Um, and we went to this concert venue to, to see the dead in concert. Apparently they used to be the Grateful Dead and then one of them actually died and they're not so grateful anymore. Uh, and uh, before the concert we were just riding segways around in the in the parking lot. Uh, Waz taught me how to ride a segway and he was showing all kinds of tricks like he was kneeling down on the segway. He talked about going downstairs in it. I, I, don't, I didn't see that happen. Um, but, uh, yeah, that was really fun. Anybody who came up to us and was curious could also have a go. I mean, that's what you have four segues for, to, to let everyone try them. Um, and then we, we, we segued into the concert venue and went to Was has a booth there. Uh, we met Quite a few of his friends were also there in this booth. I don't remember who any of them, many of them were. I do remember Dan Sokol was one of them because I, I already I knew that name from some Apple history or something somewhere. So I recognized that name, and I think there was a guy named Robert. I only remember that name because um, because I've just watched a video where Waz talks about going to concerts with this guy named Robert and what they did and what he talks about in this video that I just found, so I, I know I'm not making this up, uh, was they played Tetris for the entire concert. Uh, and they both had these flashing lights in their teeth. 
and um, they would occasionally kind of play pranks on people with the flashing lights and also was had a I think it was a blue laser pointer he told me that uh, whatever color it was it was rare to have a laser pointer in that color at the time so he was um, making blue dots appear on people's heads or whatever to see their reactions because uh, back then I guess people were not so used to seeing colors other than red uh, appear like that and and people are a lot like cats really <laughs> easily amused by laser pointers um, so they would do things like hitting each other on the side of the head and turning on the lights at exactly the right moment or turning them off like bling, 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 and then turn off I it, it looks better when they do it okay um, and by the way, Alex disappeared. I, 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 he wasn't there for most of the concert, and later when he showed up, he said he'd met a magician, so I guess the magician made him disappear, as, the, as magicians tend to do. Um, so at some point, th there was a lady in the booth below us who was talking to them a bit, and uh, Woz was telling her about how he used to, back when you used to be able to take a photo of your high score um, in Tetris and send it into the Nintendo Power Magazine, he used to have all of the high scores and they, they wouldn't let him send in any more high scores, so he sent them with his name backwards. And then he happened to mention that he'd given a Game Boy to Mikhail Gorbachev at some point and the, a week later Gorbachev was in hospital and there was a photo of him in the newspaper in his hospital bed playing Tetris on this Game Boy and this lady clearly had no idea who he was and she said oh my gosh you got to meet Gorbachev because you were the world Tetris champion wow <laughs> Which I thought was pretty funny. I mean, I didn't, I, I didn't know why it met Gorbachev. I assumed it had something to do with the asbests. Uh, apparently, um, it, it's explained a little bit in this video that I watched just before. So I'll link to that, um, where he actually tells the same story. So it's definitely not uh, my deranged mind. There's a, a box slowly sliding to the floor over there in case you can hear weird noises. Um, also, at some point, Woz and his friend were, uh, they put the leads from the Tetris game in their mouths and made their teeth light up and tried to convince this lady that they were controlling the, the Game Boy by thought power. And she said, oh my god, is that some kind of drug? Which I thought was pretty funny. Um, and during this whole time, I, I was too shy to thank Woz for the laptop he'd given me. I mean, that's obviously the natural thing to do when you meet somebody in person is thank them for the thing that they did for you, but I was too shy. Uh, I also was too shy to um, ask to see his ID because there was a, a story on Woz.org about when he was interrogated by the Secret Service and he showed them a fake ID that he had made, which had a picture of him wearing an eye patch, claiming that he was a laser technician at the Department of Defiance. And I wanted to ask if he had that ID with him. Like, I'd always thought for ages, if I ever meet Woz, I'm gonna ask him for that ID, and I was too shy to ask. But he probably didn't have it. I mean, who keeps an ID from, from decades ago around with them? Um, yeah, uh, I should have mentioned when we were in the pizza restaurant, I did actually get a picture of Woz with, uh, with one of the LEDs lit up in his teeth. Um, I didn't have a camera that could do video back then, so it took a lot of tries just to get one tooth lit up. But if I, ha if I can find that picture, I'll put that up here. I probably already showed it while I was telling that part of the story. Um, I didn't pay much attention to the concert, by the way. I was not a fan of the dead. I'd never really heard their, their music. Uh, however, um, they are a band that 
doesn't mind having their shows recorded, and I found a recording, an audio recording of that actual show on archive.org, so, um, and I've since listened to it and paid attention to it a little bit. I will put a link in the doobly-doo to that. Um, so then after the concert, we were back out in the parking lot. I, I don't remember if we got the segues out again, but they were uh, the, the funniest thing I had ever seen. At that, at that point, um, they gave Woz the Heimlich maneuver, or pretended to, and he turned on the lights in his teeth at exactly the right moment. Like, he was regurgitating some light that he had accidentally choked on. And it was hilarious. Um, yeah, so then I went, they, uh, Alex took me back to my hotel room. Um, I got there at about 1 a.m. and there was a stranger sleeping in the other bed, which was expected because I'd arranged to share a room with a, another developer from the CocoDev mailing list. Um, and then I, I think I told him the whole story hopefully the next morning, because hearing that at 1 a.m. when you've just flown in from who knows where, I don't know, that would be a bit weird. It uh, must have been a strange story for him to hear. Um, yeah, that's about it. I've I've written some segues since, um, but it turns out, I did a segue tour of Paris, and it turns out that writing a segue for three hours on a tour of Paris is a lot more tiring and more difficult than writing it for fun for 10 minutes in a parking lot. I, I mean, I mentioned in, I mentioned my cerebral palsy in the last video. I can't stand up for that long without it getting very uncomfortable. So by the end of the tour, I almost ran into a guy on a bike with, with this little kid on the bike with him, and it was pretty scary. So I recommend if you're going to write a segue, do it under the supervision of um, Steve Wozniak in a car park, and don't spend too long on it, unless you are, happen to be good at standing up, which I'm not. Um, and also, my sister, who I mentioned in the last video, I believe that she met Woz in person um, at a Segway polo tournament in New Zealand a couple of years later, so that's kind of cool. Um, I think that's that's all I have to say about that. I did meet was very briefly another time at a at a convention, but and and he actually remembered and recognized me somehow. I don't know how. I hardly recognize anybody. Um, I think that's everything. So I still don't have a sign off. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, smash the like button. Donate money to inspiring children or something. I don't know. Just be nice. Um, bye.